What's up, everybody, and welcome to the next edition of Viking Vibes, the St. Joseph by the Sea High School Experience, an exclusive podcast and web series dedicated to all things St. Joseph by the Sea. One of the segments that we are proud to produce here on the show is one that focuses on alumni, an alumni spotlight. People who have graduated St. Joe's and then gone on to do great things in the community. We're fortunate today that we have one such alum with us here today. He is the youngest sitting New York State Supreme Court judge, Mr. Brendan T. Lantry, proud graduate of the class of 2004. So, Brendan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. That was a mouthful. Now that I got it out, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to say that. So, before we get into all of the current accomplishments that you have, which we're very proud of, let's go back a little bit, right? Let's talk a little bit about the origin story, a little bit before St. Joe's. So, Tell us where you grew up, a little bit about your background, and then how eventually that led you to St. Joseph by the Sea. I'm born and raised in uh, Eltingville. I'm actually back there now. My wife and I bought a house there a few years ago. Perfect. I went to St. Charles School in, in the Mid-Island. And when I was in, my, in the eighth grade, when I was looking at which school to go to, I actually put Farrell first, C second. You're um, allowed to make a mistake. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> but I corrected the mistake. I, I thankfully got into C. And for the first time in my life, I actually went to sea. And I, I, there was a guy's night at sea, had a great time, saw the school, it was beautiful. And it's only become even more beautiful. Yeah, we'll years. get into that later because yeah. now it's... Yeah, now it is. But even then at the time, it was a great school, great community, um, on senior and solidly, just great leadership, just a wonderful school. And so I had to really make a decision. So I decided the, the Farrell uh, night that they had for admissions was actually canceled uh, okay. because of some snowstorm. Pro- yeah. so, so Typically, I, they're like in January, February, right? So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up going and spending a day and shadowing a student at Farrell. That was a very important experience because right. it made the decision for me to go to sea. And I really met some of some people who, my best friend, my best man in my wedding, I yeah. was the best man in his me- wedding, Fred Rassi and, and a bunch of other friends, Anthony Noto, Darren Passarell, a number of others, who I made it to sea and who have remained friends till this day. And I thought you were going to say that you and I were very close friends. Of and, course. But, but of I, I don't course. even get a shout out. It doesn't of matter. Of course. We'll, 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 Frank Rapachula. We'll keep that aside, our friendship. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, but in any event, just to go back for one second, it's important to, to note because one of the things we talk about is not just C in general, but the importance of understanding and learning about all the high schools that are available for kids to go. Because people who are watching or listening could be alum. They could be strangers to see. They could be listening and tuning in for the first time. The fact that you said it was important that you actually went to the open house and then actually went to the guys night, that's something that we just want to stress because it's important that now kids have the opportunity to see and actually experience the school. No more just looking at a brochure or anything. It's good that you did it. We're glad you made the decision you made, obviously. But point being is that it could have went the other way, right? They could have done something to impress you. Absolutely. And it wasn't just the aesthetics, right? It was, uh, I'm sure nowadays, starting to get into C second by putting it Trying to get into C by putting it second is probably uh, very more difficult. challenging. Yeah, it's a little very difficult. <laughs> probably more challenging right. than it was in 2000. But it wasn't just the aesthetics. It was the content. Right. It was the it was the morality. It was, I'm not going to lie, having boys and girls in the school was yeah, very it's a big important. Difference. Big difference. Life is co-ed. It Correct. is what it is. Life you can't, is co-ed. can't debate that. 100%. <laughs> now we're in C. You're there. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the things you were involved in. We don't got to go into crazy oh depth, gosh. but what were you involved in? If you, you look at this, if you memorable look at, moments. If you look at my yearbook, it's like a novel looking right. at all the different things I was involved That's in. good, though. I was the editor-in-chief for the newspaper. I love that. Okay. Uh, got me out of gym. And maybe not anymore, but it did at the time. I was in theater, actually. Right. That's how I faced my fear of public speaking. And I didn't, I, I, a lot of people got into theater because they wanted to be on Broadway, wanted right. to be in movies. I, I did it because I wanted to face that fear and get up on stage. And, and there were a number of friends that I had, Anthony Nono and others, that, that I, I joined with them on, on the stage. Yeah, just all different organizations, the Holy Name Society. I'm know, a Holy Name guy myself, yeah, remember Holy that. Name yeah, Holy Name Society, wonderful organizations that they had at sea. So, and I know now, since since I left, I think they have archery, they have oh, all they these have other everything. things. Yeah, that... they, have, they have things that you and I couldn't even imagine yeah, if we were seriously. within those walls. Seriously. But it proves the point that what they're doing at St. Joe's is arming them with everything they need to succeed, mm-hmm. no matter what it is. Matter of mm-hmm. fact, right now, they're finishing up a brand new outdoor training facility for the baseball team, lacrosse team, soccer team, because in the winter, in clement weather, sometimes the fields, even though they have all the fields available, they can't practice, now they have an indoor facility. That's so that's wonderful. just, and this is happening right now. So wonderful. always upgrading, always giving kids access to stuff they need to succeed. So talk a little bit about your segue into the political career. Okay. Right? So obviously the political career is behind me now, but there was a period of time that I was very involved, right? Yeah. So when I was in my, uh, I guess I was in, in C when 9-11 happened, right? We all remember those days of yeah. the flags on the cars and that overall sense of patriotism that some of us still have in our hearts, but that are in our community locally and, and, and nationally we had. And that's really where, when I started to pay attention more to what's happening in our community. Yeah, and course. instead of fighting my father for the remote, when he was trying to watch Meet the Press and the McLaughlin 
Facebook group. I conceded and you leaned and, in. I leaned in right. and I, I paid attention to what was happening. And then I remember it was my it was Christmas Eve, my senior year, and I said to my family, I want to get involved. I want to actually make a difference. And so I walked into a headquarters for St. Joseph by the Sea alum, Vincent Ignizio, who was running Shout out to Vinny that, Ignizio. That, that, that upcoming year. Still doing big things. <laughs> Absolutely. And and that was my first entrance into helping out our community. And from there, he won his election. And I ended up taking advice from a friend of mine at the time to to then go work in the city council. So I worked for then councilman Andrew Lanza. Right. Then in uh, coordinated his Senate campaign, went to the state Senate, realized I don't think I want to be a staffer to an elected official for the rest of my life. So I decided... Smart to, decision. Yeah. Just uh, saying. Just decided to, uh, to go to law school. So I went to... Applied to law school. I went to St. John's University School of Law. Loved it. Great school. And then at the end of my at the end of my legal education, the uh, Brooklyn District Attorney at the time, his name was uh, Charles Hines. The, okay. uh, the late Charles, Charles Hines was my professor, and he hired That's me. Cool. He hired me as an ADA. I Brooklyn. didn't even know that. That's oh, a yeah? great story. Yeah, I was a Brooklyn ADA for a few years. Okay. And wonderful experience. A wonderful experience. And then after that, I after he lost his election, so I didn't want to work for his successor, I, I ended up going back to my roots. And Vinny Ignizio then became the minority leader of the New York City Council. And there was always a council to the minority leader, whether it was Fred Cerullo to Susan Molinari or Jimmy Otto to Tom Ogdebeni. There's always been these the council who helped them address the legislation that's pending in the council, deal with the mayor's office on some of these issues. He hired me in that role, loved it. Then Vinny decides to go run Catholic Charities. <laughs> and, and so then I went to go run Dan Donovan's local office, his district office, right. Staten Island in Brooklyn, when he ran for Congress. And then I decided I actually wanted to be a lawyer again. <laughs> so, there we go. Yeah, right. So I went into private practice and uh, did that for a few years and then ultimately ran for the bench. I ran for civil court in 2021. Very cool. So yeah. just to backtrack a little, because that, that's a lot to digest. I know. It's you're, a you're, you have resumes, so many accomplishments yeah. and you just downplaying them. But, yeah. but those are all big things. So one of the key takeaways that I'm hearing is that for the last, what would we call it, 10 years? Is that fair to say? 10, 15, 10, 15 years? years? You've been on the back of the political goings-ons mm -hmm. for the entire borough, mm -hmm. knowing the intricacies, helping people get elected, helping people get what they need. So the fact that you had that position for so long. And then talk about, weren't you also the chairman of the Republican Party? I was from 20, 2018 until January of 21. I was I was the chairman of the Republican Party in Staten Island. And it was, I think we did a lot of good. Um, it wasn't it a banner year? I was there with you. Was yeah, it the... yeah. 2018, I walked in. It was a tough year, very tough year. It was a Trump re-election, Trump midterm, very tough year. And we lost the congressional seat. Dan Donovan lost his re-election and Ron Castorina on the surrogates race. But then after that, we took off. And in 2018, I just, I made it a priority of mine when I was chairman to really changed the face of our judiciary here in Staten Island. Right. And that's, you know, that's evident in what's what we've had just the other day. After I've, I'm out of politics, Mike Pinto was just elected another C grad. Another C grad. To the, Congratulations. Seat, to the civil court. He actually took my seat in the civil court. And yeah, no, there's a very, it's a very different bench than it was in 2018. With that said, we have fantastic jurists in Staten Island across the political spectrum. And I'm proud to work with them. Right now, I'm temporarily in Manhattan, actually. I'm hearing felony gotcha. cases in Manhattan, but I'm that coming back fun. to... That sounds fun. Yeah, I'm coming back to see soon. <laughs> I'm coming back to uh, that, Staten Island soon. That sounds fun. All of these accomplishments. And now, I'm going to address the biggest one in the room. So I remember election night, or even before that, having the conversation and breaking your chops saying you would be the youngest sitting Supreme Court judge in the state of New York. Yeah. And that's true. So talk about that accomplishment, because that's a huge so, deal. Yeah. As you mentioned, I, I was around a lot of different public officials, state assembly members, senators, Congress members, and the like. And I really had to think about what career path I wanted to go on. And I really think that the judiciary, you make more of an impact on people's lives than any other branch of government. Right. The, you have to be very, you need people who are very serious. You need people who are very compassionate and care about where we live and want to make sure that we keep our island the way we want it to be and, and to in our community the way we want it to be and, and make sure mo most importantly that we follow the law as written and rather than being legislators from the bench right and so that's something that really you know Not I, the interpretation I, of the law <laughs> yeah no it's our job to make sure that we follow the law as written rather than what we think the law should be and, and that's not always easy it's really not always easy especially when you may have legislation that comes forward that you may not personally think right. may not personally agree with but that's not the you role you have to be agnostic you have to put that. it aside follow the law and and i love what i do and yeah no in 2021 i launched the race for civil court vacated by my good friend and and, and fellow judge lisa gray who went to the supreme court and so i ran i had a had an opponent it. We ran. I ran a very proud race. I'm very proud of, and yeah. So I was the. I was at the time the youngest civil court judge in the city of New York. 
Mike Pinto just, and then Pinto just, just ruined it. Just ruined it's it. All right. He's a secret rag, though. So it's we'll, it's we'll all good. It Shout, it's out all good. Shout out to Mike Pinto. And, and so then, in the civil court, you have you have small claims, you have commercial litigation, you have landlord tenant, commercial landlord tenant, landlords fighting with their tenants and such. And uh, you really need somebody who's going to not care about where a person's from. I don't care if the person was from Long Island or Staten Island, North Shore, South Shore. That you're just going to interpret the law. Right. And and one of the main things that we have, the truth is, Staten Island is it's changing, and you have right. people of all different backgrounds all different ethnicities and, and that speak all different languages. And so we have a big problem in Staten Island in terms of interpreters that we don't, especially in civil court, that we would have somebody there who speaks Russian, who speaks Mandarin, who speaks Spanish, and it was very difficult to get interpreters. So I think that's getting better. I think that that's getting better, but that's a problem that we had. And, and that was one of the things I talked about in my campaign. But then, yeah, so then there was a seat created for Supreme Court right. during my first, first year in, in the civil court. And so I did run for Supreme Court uh, last year. I'm proud to have won. I'm proud to have been endorsed by both parties, three parties, the Republican, Democratic, Conservative parties. And, and yeah, so now I'm here. And uh, temporarily, I'm in Manhattan. I'm doing felony cases. I love what I'm doing. I work with some amazing people, right. fellow jurists who were U.S. attorneys who prosecuted the criminal crime. There was one of my, one of my colleagues she prosecuted the John Gotti case. You have other you have other people who were active defense attorneys and people who judges who presided over the Weinstein case or the Aton Pates case or all these and other there you are, big youngest cases. guy in the room. And Hanging then there's me. Hanging out. <laughs> but you deserve to be there. I'm not saying that in a bad way. You deserve to be there. But I'm saying the yes. the irony is that yeah. at such a young age you've been able to accomplish so much. So I want to go back because there's a couple things that jumped out at me while you were speaking. Going back to, to basics, what what are some of the things you feel like you learned at sea or sea taught you mm. that you carry with you to this day. That first thing I mentioned was morality, right? And when you're younger, you don't realize it as much right. how you important it is. You don't. As you get older, you realize that those same principles that were instilled by my Catholic education, by St. Charles, by St. Joseph by the Sea, they carry with me today. And uh, my faith is very strong, my faith in God, uh, my faith in Jesus. And and that's very strong. And, and so the, that's first and foremost, right. is that moral code. And I'd say after that, I talked about public speaking, having that opportunity to get up on stage and whatever. Well, you're good at it now, so it must have worked. <laughs> I don't know about that. But yeah, no, that was that was. And who was who was the uh, moderator or the teacher of the program at the time? It was it was originally Mr. Batista in, okay. in, in freshman year. I, know I it's wasn't changed. A lot. And then they had these this group that came in: Tanya Nicholas, Solange Bila. And such, they came in and they spearheaded the effort. And Mr. Turner was music, right? Mr. Was, was music. the music director, right. right? So he did the band. Yeah, he did the band. But it was, yeah, that was a wonderful experience. So and morality uh, and public speaking. Yeah, and then I'd say Mr. Curry, who was my okay. senior year government and politics. Hey, you a, with the face. Oh, I loved him. Yo, breath. <laughs> loved him. And and really, I, I don't know if we always agreed on policy when I was a kid. I probably still, but he was he was definitely somebody who respected everyone's position and right. opinions. And he helped me grow my, helped me solidify my own positions, which was great. So I was able to give you a, a solid framework to become the very best of what you were meant to be, which is one of the things that, that C does and C strives to do. So now going back one more time. Shoot. The other, the other I thing can keep that jumped out. So, yeah. No, don't listen, we're here. Yeah. The other thing that jumped out at me in addition to wanting to know anything from C that stood out, is the camaraderie and the, I don't want to say allegiance, but almost allegiance of working with alumni. So you mentioned multiple times that throughout the course of your career, various C graduates have stepped in to help mm -hmm. or offered assistance or guidance yeah. or anything. And I feel like that's a major part of being a part of, of any institution, right? Absolutely. Especially a school, because once you graduate, you can't be forgotten about, right? Absolutely. The idea is that you now have a network. So talk about the camaraderie of being a C grad and the alumni. Absolutely. As I said, first and foremost, my, my friend and one of my best friends on earth is Vinny Ignizio, yep. who, who I, walk, I was a kid walking into that headquarters. They thought I was a spy because I asked him any questions. <laughs> and and now we vacation together. Right. Uh, spend, you know, a con we're with together a lot. Joe Borelli, Councilman Joe Borelli, wonderful person. I think a great leader. And and he's just, he's been such a friend. He's become such a close friend over the years. He's a, he's a wonderful person. And as I said, those other just friendships that are not, that weren't derived from government right. or politics, those as well. And Mike Pinto has become a great friend. But I'd say that I want us to do more. And my, my, my 20th year is coming up next year. It means you're old. I know. It's crazy. And so I've actually been speaking to some fellow Gina Portogallo yep. and, and some others just about starting to get things off, off the ground for our 20th year. I year told year. you, we're going to help you out. We're going to yeah. make it good. Yeah. yeah. I promise. You'll have something good going Looking on. Looking forward to it. Yeah, Looking that'll be nice. To it. So now we have all of these elements that have been put together. It's put you in a position to succeed. What is something now where you are in your current position that you would have either changed or told mm -hmm. yourself when you were in C, 
That's now you're question. here and you're looking back. Oh, you, didn't, you didn't tell me this question. It's a tough one, but I mean, well, because we want we no, want to get we want to get value. We want to we want to get right to the heart of it. Of course, no, I'm just joking. I'd say you know, when I was in C, uh, I was such a uh, I loved math. I loved uh, I, I was starting to get that government that passion for government at right. that time. I transitioned into this reader and writer and you know uh, that kind of a role. So I'd say or worked out in politics. Yeah, right? it is what it is. Let's yeah, call it yeah, no, it did. There's but a level I'd, of theatrics to politics. Yeah, I'd say if I looking back, what would I have done? I probably would have paid a little bit more attention in English class and, <laughs> and, and maybe been a little bit more of a reader earlier on in my life. That I'd probably say, but I don't have many regrets from my time in C because That's good. I really got involved. I really got very involved in the school, and I. I thank St. Joseph by the Sea for getting me to where I am today, and I, it's absolutely responsible for where I am today. That's so. very cool. So that, that's always nice to oh, hear. It is. For folks that might be watching and listening who have no affiliation to the school yeah. or, at the same token, who may be looking to attend the school, right? you mm-hmm. got young kids, maybe fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. What's something that you would say that is the most beneficial reason that someone Mm. should choose a school of St. Joe's because right now these kids have so many choices and and God bless them that they have so many and all the schools are doing their best to create new programs reinvigorate their building capital improvements the good thing is that all these schools on the island are great and they're all really trying to do good things for the kids but there are differentiators. So yeah. what would you tell someone as to why yeah. no, I St. Mean, Joe's? I, in my current role, I can't promote a specific organization or whatnot. I'm going to get in trouble. I can only speak, I'm I can only speak about my, my own experience, which is just that for me, at St. Joseph by the Sea, it had a commitment to excellence. I think it still has a commitment to excellence. I'd say that you don't realize it now, 7th, 8th, seventh, eighth grader right. looking at yeah, this now. You don't realize it now, but, but as you get older, as you look to develop a family, as you look to meet your partner, that moral code, that sense of, uh, should I go to a public school, private school? There's something to going to a Catholic school, going to uh, going to a school that's going to instill those values, and, and rather than just going to Mass on Sunday, that you're going to have that kind of all day long in different elements of your education. It, it is very important. And I'd say just, I see the numbers. I see the numbers. I see that St. Joseph by the Sea, where the kids are going on college yeah. after that, and the, the scholarship that they're right. receiving. It's, the program it's, has come a long way since really, you and I were there, It's my really friend. amazing. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It really is astonishing. And, and and so I think that's something else to definitely weigh in their consideration. Yeah. Now, when was the last time you've been back at the campus? Because I want to touch on the improvements, the capital projects. Have you seen anything really? So when I won my race for civil court, there was it wasn't a question as to where I wanted to be sworn in. I wanted to be sworn in at St. Joseph by the Sea, and that was great. And I was thankful to to the school for allowing me to do that. And and my my good friend County Clerk Steve Fiala swore me in, and Vinny Ignizio was the MC of the event. He's got to get his way into everything. Vinny. I know he does. I pull him in, yeah. and and such. No, we we had a I had my 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 swearing in there, and we had. I've seen that since you, when I was there, the cafeteria had all the nice wood paneling, but I think you've even expanded they that expanded out expanded it over the summer, Father increased it again. <sighs> He's got more seating. They got new classrooms. They just added brand new parking facility to increase. Mm-hmm. So they're always doing something. But to your point, the moral compass yeah. is what the building, the facade, the sports complex, none of that will replace. Right what you received and what I received when we went there years ago. Because that's still at the heart of all that they do, even though they have all the bells and whistles and programs and sports. We're visual people, right? We like to walk into a place where we feel safe and we feel comfortable and it's nice and it's warm and it, it, it's conducive to a learning environment but it's what's well, actually coming out of the teachers mouths and, right. and and coming out of the administrators mouths that matters and yeah now that's what made a difference we're going to try and use you to help us exponentially increase our outreach to alumni mm-hmm. and i didn't tell you that before this but, okay thanks, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna use you as a foundation to build a network of a very strong alum in the past we have a very strong network of alumni, but then COVID. And then, so there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that kind of caused a rift in, yeah. in the tightness of the network. So we really want to get people involved such as yourself. So if there's any alumni who are going to be listening or watching, what's something that you would tell them to come back, get involved? Why should they come back and why should they help the school? Because we need to keep it going. Because if we, don't, if we don't do something about it, then yes, it will fall by the wayside. It is cheaper um, for people to, to not choose Catholic education, right. unless we, we improve it, unless we continue growing, this will not be there for the next generation, for our children, for our grandchildren, for the community to make sure that we continue to make Staten Island the beautiful place that it is. Again, I'm sitting in Manhattan, so I keep talking about right. I got to go home to the promised land. I right. keep saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. And St. Joseph by the Sea, with all of our friends that went to uh, other, let's call them other high schools, I always call it the Harvard on Highland as opposed yeah. to... Uh, yeah, no, so. that's true. That's a good nickname. <laughs> so, so before we close... Is there anything we didn't touch on? Because, you know, I have an idea of where we want these to go, but there could be some stuff that we didn't touch on that you no, think is important. Is no, there I anything think, you think someone I, should... I'm glad, 
I'm happy about your last question because of when you talk about the rest of the alumni, I think we all need to remember where we came from, right? Remember the good times that we had. Or the, we were in high school. Right. Not everything was always perfect, right? right? But that, it, it gave us the foundation for where we are today. And I think that we need to step up our alumni, our, our alumni uh, recruitment here in, in St. Joseph by the Sea. I do. And, and that's why I was, I didn't hesitate when they asked me to come on. I took my first vacation this week in my professional career, so it was good nice. timing. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that, yeah, I think we all need to step up and talk about what ways we can do to make sure that we keep St. Joseph by the Sea, the great institution that it is, and to and to just bring it into the to the next few decades because there's been great improvements to the aesthetics, but we can keep going because you see that other schools then respond in kind right. to the same thing and right. then we're all in the same position. Well, listen, at the you end know, of the day, which yeah. is great, we're and setting I the bar say higher. This, I yeah. could say this, but but people look at me cockeyed when I say this. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, and it's not, I don't think it's a bad thing to say. It is a business in as much as it is yeah. an academic institution. They are in the business of educating and providing mm -hmm. a moral compass. So they need to raise funds. They yeah. need to have events. They mm -hmm. need to do capital improvements. It's just the reality of, of what it is. And one thing I actually didn't say, civics education. Is okay. well. And that's one thing from Mr. Curry and from others, is how important civic education is in our schools and how people who just don't know the first thing about what's happening in our community. Right. I'm not going to pretend that any of us fully, any of us from here in Staten Island, or many of us, I should say, in Staten Island, fully understand what's happening in the Middle East right now. Right. What having that, you know, that base of knowledge of what's happening in the community and what's happening in the country, yeah, we, we should understand. Or even the desire to want to know what's correct, going on. Right? Correct. Correct. And it matters. Wondering. Right. It matters. It, it's the reality TV doesn't matter. Right. This matters. Right. Yeah. It matters when when you see crime in a certain situation, different things that are happening in our city, state, and federal government, and on the international stage, it, it matters. It'll affect people's lives. It'll felt, affect our long-term well-being. And so I just, I would say to everyone who's, anybody who's listening or watching this, is just, just so, it's so vitally important to be well-informed, to be following up with the news, and to get involved in our community in some capacity. Whether it's the, the government, political end of the world, or there's many other ways of getting involved in our community other than that. Our community boards, our civic associations, and whatnot. Um, but I think it's just civics and passing that on to the next generation so that, again, we just don't have a bunch of people that are just on their phones all day right. and you know watching walking reality around, TV. Right. Walking around know? like zombies. So that's my two cents, at least. Well, perfect. So I think we're going we're gonna to close on that unless okay. you have anything you'd like to add because oh. the floor is all yours. <laughs> you sure? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Anthony. And, and again, I, I loved my time at St. Joseph by the Sea, and it's just wonderful to be here to talk about my experience. Well, we, we loved having you here. We want to encourage everyone who is watching or listening to hit that like button, share or subscribe to the content. If you need any further information about St. Joseph by the Sea, of course, visit the website at josephc.org. You can also check it out on Viking Vibes on YouTube. You can watch their YouTube channel for all the episodes that we're recording here, as well as on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all the other major podcast platforms. So once again, we just want to thank you for being here with us today. We have Brendan T. Lantry, the youngest sitting judge in the state of New York for the Supreme Court, class of 2004. I got that right. You did. You did. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Take care. Good seeing you.